These silvo pastures on the farm, which you see behind me, are part of a uh, SARE program, farmer grant in uh, research comparing silvo pasture production to managed woodlot production to open pasture production. And specifically, what I did in these silvo pastures was I took a closed canopy forest, which was about 50 years old, made up of hardwoods, pr pretty much pole size, and I thinned that forest out, leaving the most desirable stems. Um, but the idea here was I wanted to allow light to reach the understory so I could allow forages to grow. So it's a competitive interaction between trees and grasses, and grasses in a closed canopy forest get out-competed, they don't persist. So what I'm trying to do is allow grasses to persist by thinning out my trees. I don't want to remove all the trees, but I want to thin them out so that way there's enough light reaching for the grasses. So I'm trying to balance this number of trees and amount of grasses. The intent of these trees is to produce timber. And so I also selected desirable species for timber. You'll see maples in here, sugar and red maple. You'll see a few birches. You'll see some white ash. And you'll also see a lot of black cherry. Black cherry is a really high value timber species, but it's risky in a silvo pasture because it can be toxic to livestock. When the leaves wilt in a black cherry, they're toxic to livestock. And so some livestock are more sensitive than others, but to most livestock varieties are sensitive to wilted black cherry leaves. That's a management consideration that I have in these, in these paddocks. When I put livestock in here, I make sure there aren't any large crowns of wilted black cherry leaf, but it's a balance between having a high value timber tree and a potentially toxic hazard to my livestock. And I'm mitigating that by checking the paddocks before I put my livestock in. So this is an area that's representative of what the hardwood silvo pastures I showed earlier look like pre-treatment, pre-harvest, pre-removal of any trees, pre-silvo pasture creation. And whenever you're thinking about converting a forest into a silvo pasture or a scrubland into a silvo pasture, you really want to consider what's there. What do you have to work with? What may be challenging? Which trees do I want to save? Which trees are the ones that I want to continue growing into the future? And which ones do I want to remove? Because remember, I'm trying to remove trees to allow light to reach the understory. And so if we look at some of the trees behind me, these two are actually a pretty good example. You have a, a white ash tree here, and you have a red maple right behind it. They're clearly competing with each other. Even if we look at the stems, they're competing with each other, but their crowns, more importantly, are what's competing. The branches at the top compete with each other. And if we look at the form of the white ash tree, which is this one here, it's crooked, it's curled, it's turned around. We don't want that. That's not gonna ever produce nice timber. Timber is our goal, and timber is our goal in this hardwood stand. Whereas this red maple has a nice straight stem, a fairly full crown, not any defects along the bowl. Whereas if we just step over to this black cherry, we can see that there are clearly some defects on this tree. For example, that burl, which is black knot on cherry, that's, that's gonna kill this tree. This would be an undesirable tree. This would be one to remove, because if we left it, it's not gonna produce any timber for us. It's not gonna produce any real value to us, but it's going to definitely outshade any forages we're gonna to want to establish. So when we think about thinning these forests, we wanna remove any of the undesirables and favor some of the desirables. In this situation, I wanna favor this red maple. So when trying to decide whether to leave a tree such as this black cherry versus another tree such as the black cherries behind me with straighter stems, the ones behind me with straighter stems would be far more desirable because they're gonna put on valuable timber into the future, whereas a tree like this, you will not get a full saw log out of it. It will not be worth very much as a timber tree. It's a great firewood tree, but why not remove that firewood now to give enough light for your forages to grow. So you wanna select certain trees. And if this is a, a very new concept to somebody starting a silvo pasture, the best thing that they can do is work with a professional forester. And there are professional foresters in every state of the country. And they are very good at helping you select which trees will produce value. They are very good at knowing how do you remove enough trees to allow light to the understory 
but not remove too many trees to be detrimental to the ones you're saving. Additionally, a forester should be able to help a silvopasture pasture practitioner with actually making some money potentially off the timber sale. If the timber here is valuable enough, somebody may want to pay to come and have it removed as opposed to you, the farmer, spending your time cutting all these trees, which will take a long time. If that's your goal, it will work, but it's gonna take you a while. And so that's something to think about.